into the house of the Lord. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Somebody ought to bear witness this morning. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I think I'll say it one more time. I, th I think y'all thought I said was speaking Swahili. I said, oh, bless the Lord. Bless his name, for he's worthy. Touch the musician. And then 
God touch us who are the waiting congregation. And we thank you in advance, not only for 148 years, but we thank you for what you're going to do in the future to come. Again, God, stay right here with us. In Jesus' precious name.
church. Just a little bit. He also pastors uh, Union Chapel Baptist Church. And uh, you know Union Chapel has been here many, many times. And I think we've had just about every pastor y'all had. Amen. But on today we're glad to have our brother to break bread with us after being on the battlefield and in service for the Lord for 148 years. Preacher, we want to say to you, you are welcome in this place. I think you have Sister Henderson with you. 
do you want me to introduce or you want to introduce your own wife? <laughs> Sister Henderson, it's okay if he does it twice. Stand up, baby, and let the church see who you are. <laughs> We're so glad to have you with us as well. And he'll introduce his church or whatever when he comes, but we'll move out the way. And after the next uh, song from our choir, the next voice you will hear is that of none other than our preacher for the hour, who will break the bread of life, who will feed us manna from on high. None other than my friend, my brother, my colleague, Pastor Marlon Henderson. All I'm gonna say, preacher, this for Lee, this for Lee Antoine. Preach, preacher. I ain't scared. You preach like Jesus is coming back today. Preach, preacher. Like somebody lying is on the line. Preach, preacher. We're not scared in St. Albert. We want some preaching. And we came for some preaching in this house. So Marlon Henderson, Pastor Brother.
to his darling son Jesus, who died that we all may have a right to the tree of life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To the precious Holy Ghost, yes, who leads and guides us in all truth. To my big sister and Pastor Moss. Come on, Sam. Have a listen. And to the wonderful cologne of this house, Brother Moss. Our deacon, officer of this great church, to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we greet you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, who is able to do all things well. Is that right? I'm happy that I see my cousin made his way out here today, Pastor Oris Dupree. God bless you. Amen. Also, one of the sons of the house is here with me, Reverend Hudson. Wave your hand, Reverend Hudson. Amen. He shared a powerful word with us this morning, uh, Dr. Moss. Amen. Kind of rested the old fellow up a little bit for this afternoon. Amen. Amen. Uh, we have some that. Traveled with us, amen, from Union Chapel and Antioch. I'm going to ask them to stand, yes, amen. Y'all stand, let them see you. Come on. Amen. 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 Yes, I didn't travel alone. Thank the Lord, brothers and sisters. Well, since I've been here, the scriptures have been read, songs have been sung, prayers have went up around God's throne. Yet I believe somebody got up this morning somewhere in this world and didn't say, I thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. Yeah. Yeah. For we have to realize it's not our goodness, but it's God's grace. Am I right, somebody? It woke us all from a slumber that you and I called sleeping early this morning. He saw fit to touch us with his finger of love. And our eyes flew open and we beheld a brand new day. And for that, somebody would be thankful. Somebody would be grateful. Somebody would be grateful. He didn't have to do it. Oh, but he did. And this choir know they're singing up a storm. Why don't y'all go ahead and sing it? Amen. Don't come to hold you long today, but since they sound so good, y'all don't mind if I kind of get my voice together and sing my own song. You know? The musician to give me C sharp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man. Those who know music, C sharp and D flat, that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. they, they sound so good, they know all those chromatics back there. Amen. Mm -hmm. hey. oh, that sounds good. God bless you. I've had some good days. I've had some good days. Yeah. 
Thessalonians. Yeah. Yeah. Chapter one. First Thessalonians chapter one. Starting at the first verse. say amen. amen. If you don't have it, you can say, wait a minute. It seems that we all have it. It starts off like this, brothers and sisters. Paul and Sylvanus and Timotheus, who unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. We give thanks to God always for, for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. Knowing, brethren, the love, your election of God. Yeah. For our gospel came not unto you yes, sir. in word only, uh -huh. but also in power uh -huh. and in the Holy Ghost yeah. and in much assurance as yes, you know Lord. what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction yes, with joy of the Holy Ghost, yes, yes. so that you were examples to all that believed in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God would is spread abroad, yes, so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves showed us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, yes. yeah. and to wait for his Son mm -hmm. from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, yeah. even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Mm -hmm. God bless you on the day you may be seen. Right. Pastor Moss and the St. Alma family, I want to, if you will, for a little while, Take your thing this year yes, sir. and turn it into a question. Mm. Yeah. 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 And that question is, your theme is continuing to build. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I want to ask the question from this particular text, what are you building? What are you building? All right. Brothers and sisters, sis, we are made in the image of God. Yeah. And yeah. God is the great architect of the universe. Yeah. And God is the master builder. Yeah. It should come as no surprise that humans are builders. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've built homes for habitation. We've built restrooms for sanitation. We've built the light bulb for illumination. We've built phones for communication. I'm giving y'all time to catch up. We've built television for observation. We've built computers for computation. We've built vehicles for transportation. We've built schools for information. We've built jobs. Y'all ain't caught up yet. We've built jobs for occupation. We've built jails for reformation. We have a military for protection, but when it came to the church, God said, I can't let you build that. And I had to ask the question. I say, I say, I say, I say, God, you let us build everything else. Why can't we build the church? He said, because the church is your foundation. I wish I had an answer for you. And he said, everything that you build, Henderson, everything that your race build, yeah, it has problems. Your house always need repair. Restroom, the plumbing backs up, light bulbs die out. Come on, computer crashes, vehicles always broke down on the side of the road. The schools have shooting and people are getting hurt. Am I right, somebody? Your job, yeah, you might not leave it, but they have a way of leaving you. It's supposed to be reformation in the jail, but folk come out and want to go right back in because they're really not doing what they're supposed to do. Do. He said, so I don't want no spiritual crash in your foundation, so I'm going to build it myself. And 
Yeah, my question for you, Sam, aren't you glad that God is the foundation of the church and not man? Because if man built the church, he would let a few folk get and everybody else would have to leave. The old folk was saying like this, if salvation was something you could buy, the rich would live and the poor would die. And I'm glad today that, hey, that Jesus is the foundation. and sisters, therefore I, uh, I lay foundation, he says, on the church, of yeah. the church myself. Yeah. He said, here's what you can do. He said, then you can rest assured mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that your anchor will hold. Yeah. Here it is, if you build yeah, yeah. on the shoulders of yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and brothers and sisters, so since Jesus is the foundation and you're continuing mm -hmm. to build, the question still stands. Yeah. What is it? That you are building. All right. The church, when we look at this text, the church at Thessalonica was a young congregation mm -hmm. established by the Apostle Paul on his second missionary journey. In Acts chapter 17, Luke records for us Paul's initial visit to Thessalonica. When Paul, Timothy, and Silas arrived in Thessalonica, they spent Three weeks there teaching and preaching in the synagogue. All right. Luke reasoned in scripture, he says, he, this is what he said. He said, he reasoned with them from scripture, explaining and proving that the Christ had to suffer yeah. and rise from the dead. Here it is. And saying to them, This Jesus, <laughs> not another Jesus, but this Jesus, yeah. I am proclaiming to you. Here it is is the Christ, which means he is the Savior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Paul, brothers and sisters, when you, when you read Acts chapter 17, Paul had to leave out of Thessalonica. All right. He had to leave Thessalonica. Then he had to go to Berea. And then from Berea, he went to Athens. And, and, and sometime later in Corinth, Paul would reunite with, Paul, with, with Timothy and he would reunite with Silas. And after Timothy came back, brothers and sisters, he came back with some good news about the church at Thessalonica. Yeah, brothers and sisters, he brought, he, brought, he brought Paul some good news. And then Paul begins to write this letter <laughs> to the Thessalonian church. Well, brothers and sisters, he was commending them, here it is, not because they was building a church, but he commended them because they were a model church. Yeah, yeah, he would let them know that they are a model church. Catch this now, not because they were building one, Dr. Moss, yes. but because of the type of brand of church they were building. I wish I had a house up in here. Yeah, you, you do realize every local church has its own brand. Every local church has its own identity. I wish I had a house up in here. Not, not everybody is doing the same thing. Not everybody should be using the same method, but your message ought to still be Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They was building a particular brand. And so when I look at this text, we have to ask the question, what was the brand? Mm. Uh, the Thessalonian church was building. Well, the Thessalonian church, here it is, brothers and sisters, they was building an energetic church. Right. Let me hear y'all say that, an energetic church. Yeah. Watch this now, in verses 1 through verse 3, they are an energetic church because Paul gives thanks to God, here it is, for their strong faith, for their labor of love, and for their patience of hope. Yeah, these three ingredients, brothers and sisters, I tell you, it takes it takes energy to portray because faith rests on the past. Love, yeah, acts on the present, and hope looks to the future. Yeah, it, it, it takes a whole lot of energy because Come Hebrews on, 11 and 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. It, 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 it takes energy because John 13 and 34 says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And here's the question I got for, do you love somebody sitting next to you? Let me try it one more time. Do you, do you, do you really love the person? Oh, I'm about to check it out right quick. Look, talk right quick and say, I love you. Now, don't do it if you don't mean it. Yeah, brothers and sisters. It, yeah. it, 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 it takes energy for hope. Because Romans 5 and 2 says we are to rejoice. Here it is in hope. Well, what kept them energetic? Well, when you look at this word faith in this text, F A 
Ah. TH. All right. You take FA off the front of that word faith, take TH off the back of that word faith, you're left with the letter I. Yeah. Faith is personal. Yeah. I wish I had a house of it. Let me say that again. I say faith is personal. You got to get to a certain point in your life where you're no longer living off of mama's prayers and living off of big daddy's prayers. I wish I had a house of it. No, you got to get to a point to where you know God has done something in your own life to where you can look behind you and say, if it had not been for God on my side, I don't know where I'd be. I've had some trials. I've had some tribulations. You just heard Dr. Moss say, I've had some ups and I've had some downs. I just believe in 148 years. Somebody here to say, I'm a church will say, listen, I ain't going off of what nobody else tell me about my Jesus. As a matter of fact, you can't tell my story. Let me tell my story about how good he's been to me. Hey, he picked me up and started me on my way. I got to read my portion of health and strength. Do I have any help up here to say, yeah, I don't have to go over what nobody else say. It's personal with me. And you ought to come in here, Sam, and you ought to come in here, brothers and sisters, with some energy. Yeah, the praise team shouldn't have to pop you up. The choir shouldn't have to pop you up. They shouldn't have to say your perfect song. I wish I had a house of beer. So Dr. Law shouldn't have to preach until she catch a stroke. You ought to be able to think about what God has done for you. And you ought to be able to bring your own energy. Because he's done so much. Do I have any energetic for me? Because I'm asking for because some of y'all ain't said nothing yet. You're sitting like this, like God holding your feet like this, and hey, like you've been sucking on sour lemon. But I ain't talking to you, baby. I'm talking to some folks that God has done something in your life. God, yeah, the doctor gave you up, and hey, and you're still here. You might live, the doctor. Why? Because you don't look like what you've been through. You ought to have some. They were, yeah, they, were. Yeah. they built yeah. an energetic yeah. church. Yeah. Yeah. But Dr. Law, they not only built an energetic church, uh -huh. but when you look at it again, uh -huh. they was building and was thanking God that they were an elect church. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right there in verse number four, they are an elect church. Uh -huh. Because yes, Paul said that they have been chosen <laughs> by God. Do y'all see that? Yes, yeah. And brother, yeah. so whenever God uh, 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 picks a person out from among something, He has a purpose in mind. Yeah. No wonder, yeah. brother, so Peter tells us on one occasion, He said, "But ye are a chosen generation, hmm? yeah, a royal priesthood. Am I right, somebody? Uh, a, a holy nation. Here it is, a peculiar." people that you yeah, show forth the praises of him who yeah. have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Yeah. That's what I just got through telling you. Yeah, you ought to be glad because somebody have not always had the mindset to be in church at two o'clock on the house. Yeah. 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 Say that when I looked at that being an elect church and I looked at what Peter says, he says, but we are a chosen. So watch this. He says, we're chosen. Yes, sir. Which means we are uh, selected. He says, we are royal. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> which yeah. means we are splendid. He says, we are holy. Which means we are sanctified. He yeah, says, sir. we are peculiar. Which means we are strange. Y'all yeah. need to stop right He says, we are selected. We are splendid. We are sanctified. We are strange. And catch this, y'all. We're not strange among ourselves. Now, we are strange to the world. Why? Because we are in the world, but we are not of the world. Why? Because we are elect and we have been chosen by the master. Yeah. 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 You know what's so sad about us saying that? We still have some booger bags yeah. in yeah. God's house. That's all right, though. That's all right. That's, 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 that's all right. I know it's a process. I know it's a process. Yeah, yeah. But some folk been in the process for 60 years. They still have not turned. They still are a booger bag. Yeah. Am I right, somebody? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It don't make no sense for you to be 60, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old and still acting like a fool. No, baby. God has chosen you. God has elected you. And you ought to act accordingly. Yeah. When I was growing up, mommy would take me somewhere, grandpa would take me somewhere, and say, Now listen, let me tell you something, boy. Uh, you act like you got some sense. <laughs> <laughs> Hear that, brother and sister? 
when you leave these four consecrated walls, you yeah. are to go out into the world and act like you have some spiritual sense. Am I right, somebody? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Sister. What, what, what made them motivated? They were motivated, they were elected because they realized what they was doing was not of themselves. Uh -huh. And you know when we get to a part, brothers and sisters, when we think we yeah. own a church, come on now, come on now. we got trouble. Yeah. I was at a house come on now, come on now. And, and, and brothers and sisters, and I'm, I'm so glad that the Lord is putting more and more diverse, uh, diversity on this battlefield. Yeah. And, and, and let, me, let me say this while I'm at it, brothers and sisters. Somebody may get mad with me. Y'all might be recording, but that's all right. Here it is. Yeah. God can use and God can choose whoever he will to carry out his mandate. And it's sad to say, in this 21st century, God has some elect folks, and yet you got some oligarchies. Say that, God. Who says they ain't supposed to do this and they ain't supposed to. Well, let me ask you something. What is it that you're doing? You sitting there with your arms folded. You sitting there waiting for somebody. And when God do bring somebody to you, you ready to sit there and criticize. Tell somebody be quiet. And let God use those who he has elected. And can I help y'all? Everybody can't do everything in God's house. Can I help you with something? Everybody can't be the pastor. This is a church anniversary. Yeah. Wish I had a house over here. Dr. Moss don't need nobody. I'm talking about elect church. In an elect church, brother, listen, everybody know their role. Everybody know what they're supposed to do. And when God get ready to move this house in a new direction, he ain't gonna talk to the deacon board. He ain't gonna talk to the choir. I wish I had a house over here. He ain't gonna be talking to the car. He's going to hit Dr. Moss and tell Dr. Moss, I need this house to go east, not west. Yeah. You got unsaved all the doctors. I just don't see it like they were normal sister, man. You ain't supposed to see it like that. You supposed to get in line and fuck. Baby, if you a cook, you cook. Don't go out here and try to hush you. Get you up yourself. <laughs> Dr. Moss, I tell you, don't put no other ushers at the door. I have pretty ushers at the door, handsome ushers. Other ushers, they'll run more folk out than you trying to get in. This is a church anniversary. about an electric. I got to move on from this point. Now I'm about to give you an illustration. You got to be 45 and older, 40 and older to understand this, but they don't make them like this anymore. Picture a broom. Yeah, yeah. You got the handle. Yeah. Then you come on down. You got the part that hooks down to the straw. Yeah. But before you get to the straw, you got rings around the straw. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the broom, brothers and sisters, when you look at it, it could be styled after the church. Right. The broom handle, that's the pastor. All right. Come on down to where them See, they don't make the brooms like that no more. Come on down to the three to the Y represents the deacon board. Right. And then you got the straw that spreads all out. That's the congregation. Yeah. But brothers and sisters, when you get ready to sweep your house, when the old folk got ready to sweep their house, they didn't reach down and grab the three little rings. Yeah. I had a house up here. They didn't reach down, yeah, and grab the straw. No, no. When you got ready, when they got ready to sweep, they grabbed the handle. He was here going. Y'all come a little closer because y'all live too quiet. When God get ready to do some sweeping with his church, he ain't going to reach down and grab the three little strings. He ain't going to reach down and grab the straw. He ain't going to reach the handle. In other words, when he get ready to use his church, he going to grab the pastor. That's an elect. That's an elect church. What are you building? Oh Dr. Moss, I haven't been in this thing too long, only 16 years. Yes, sir. But in these 16 years, I've had to deal, as a young pastor, I've had to deal with rascals. Book of bad, as y'all record, I can't see what I really want to say. I've had to deal with folk that want to lead the pastor. You don't lead the pastor, baby. The pastor leads you. But you know, now I'm to a point where, hey, y'all want to buy an airplane, go get it. Yeah, yeah. You want to buy a monkey ring? Go ahead and go get that out of there. I'm to that age now. I ain't fighting with you, Ralph. Yeah. If you don't want to listen to what I got to tell you and listen to what does say the Lord, baby, that's between you and God, because I'm going to still stand on Sunday morning. I'm going to still try to teach on Tuesday night and tell you what does say the Lord. Yeah. 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 
They were, they were building an energetic church. They were building an elect church. Something else in this text. They was building an exemplary church. I'm trying to hurry. In verses 5 through verse 7, that's an exemplary church. Because of Paul, the text says, because of Paul's example to them. And then because of their example to the world. Now, watch this. Watch this, y'all. There's two things, there's two things uh, uh, from verses 5 to 6 that we need to take notice about Paul's example. Right. Notice now, in verse 5, we notice that Paul's preaching was anointed by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. We had a house up in here. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, then, and, and, and let me say this. Uh, say that, I, know, I, I, I know what kind of pastor you have. I know what kind of preacher you have because every time she comes to Union Chapel, she tear down the walls, she tear down the roof, and hey! Yeah, it's saturated with the Holy Spirit. And here's the question saying, I'm an Archie Glad. Yeah. We'll try that one more time. Archie Glad. But you don't come to church, Lord have mercy. You ought to leave, brothers and sisters, better than it was when you came. You should not come to church and leave worse than what it was. Come on, what the hell out? It was an exemplary church because yeah. it's yeah. preaching. Yeah, it's anointed by the Holy Spirit. Paul starts off by saying, our gospel. Y'all see it in the text? He says, our gospel. And in order for a person to be able to claim ownership of the gospel, they have to first be born again. Good God Almighty. There's no preacher, Dr. Moss and, 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 and Dr. Uh, Dupree and, and, and Reverend, you, and, and the other preacher that, may be, that, I, that I haven't mentioned, you cannot stand behind this sacred this and declare what God has given to you if you're not born again. So had a house over here. And it, look, it might look easy to you what they do on Sunday morning, but you don't realize what goes on behind closed doors. And I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Well, well, man, I don't believe all of that. Yeah. You know, I'm, I hear some people say, I'm here because he made me. Woo. Yeah. See how quiet y'all got? Yeah. Dr. Moses said, you, so we say, man, baby, you got to be going again. But well, he made me. He, he, he know all about me. Yeah, but you know one thing? He made the monkey. Yeah. He made a baboon. He made a skunk. You know, he, he made a buzzard. Come on, he made an old crow. Huh? He made a chicken. Come on, talk. He made a hippopotamus. He, now, he made all that. He made the gorilla. Like, come on. You are his, baby, just because he made you. You are his if you have accepted his son, Jesus, as your Lord and as your Savior. And here's the question, my brother. This, do I have any same folk in here this, to say, hey, I'm better than a monkey. I'm better than a gorilla. I have a soul down on the inside, and my soul has been saved. Yeah. 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 church. Yeah. This is something else I want y'all to catch. Paul says that he came not unto me in word only. That right there, y'all that close up on me. He said, but also in power, right in the Holy Ghost. Now, brothers and sisters, y'all know that's the written word. That's the spoken word. Ooh, thank God for the living word. And for 148 years, yeah. uh, St. Helmer had to deal with the written word. They've had to deal with the spoken word. But you cannot make it just on the written word and the spoken word. You ought to thank God for the living word. And, and, and that's why Dr. Moss get happy behind this sacred letter. That's why so many other pastors get happy behind this sacred letter. Because the letter, brothers and sisters, is dead. But it's Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit that brings it alive. And you are able to walk out of here feeling a whole lot better. Yeah, oh yeah. 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 Am I talking to anybody? Yeah. Then, brothers and sisters, in verse 6, we noted that look at Paul's personal lifestyle. His mm -hmm. lifestyle is anointed by the Holy Spirit. Paul's life before these new converts, it compelled him to follow Christ. Now, watch something in this text. Paul says, you became followers of us okay. and of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go too fast. Watch yeah. this, Dr. Moth. This is going to bless you. That's a divine order there. Paul says, you followed us. Yeah. Yeah. Then you followed the Lord. Yeah. Boy, y'all, boy, don't know. Yeah. Dr. Dupree, I think y'all yeah. see it, huh? Yeah. Let, let me try one more time. He said, he said, he said, when y'all watched what we was doing, y'all yeah. followed us. Yeah. And then you followed the law. Come on. Come on a little closer. Here it is, brothers and sisters. Those new converts wanted to make sure was this Christianity 
anything that you all have preached about and teached about wasn't really worth anything. Let me see what it do for you first, and then I'll decide if it have any effect on you. Then I'll decide if I wish I had a house up in here. And so many times, brothers and sisters, being trying to be an exemplary church, we don't have a strong witness to the world. I wish I had a house up in here. Yeah, the world has an influence on us instead of having an influence on the world. And so the world said, listen, this Christianity thing ain't doing nothing for you, so why in the world I'm going to join? followed us. I didn't, make, I didn't make that up. And then he said you followed the law. He really is saying, I'm in visiting friends. Ooh, do, you, do, do you have enough example in yourself as a Christian that when non-Christians see you, they can say, I want a little bit of that. Come on, that's that's that. Do you profess one thing <laughs> on Sunday yeah, and live yeah, like something else Monday through Saturday. Yeah, yeah. We call that brothers and sisters a hypocrite. And it's hard to research if you are a hypocrite. No, you ought to tell somebody, I want to be on the temporary church. I want to represent my Christ the best way I can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Paul not only yeah. tells us that here in First Thessalonians, but when you look at yes, sir. Philippians 1. Mm -hmm. He talks about how God uh, used his body yeah. uh, to magnify the law. Yeah. I'm going to be all right here. Yeah. How is it yeah, that a small body mm -hmm. could magnify an already big God? Good heaven's sake. Here it is, brothers and sisters. You know Y'all know how far the stars is. Y'all know how far the moon is. It's way out there and it's big. But here's the beauty. A small telescope can look up into the sky and bring a huge object such as the moon and stars and bring them close to the earth. Here we are. When Paul said, God used my body to magnify him. Brothers and sisters, we are able to use our body to to bring Christ Jesus closer and closer and closer. And I wish I had a house up in here. When you're an example, you don't mind God using you for his glory. Yeah. 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 I'm almost through now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm almost through. Well, watch this, y'all. In verse 7, then example. Mm -hmm. We see that this church is a model to all believe, the text says, in Greece. Now, the testimony of these Christians that did not burn just brightly in their own community. All right. And merely at home. But when you look at this text, brothers and sisters, it also shone abroad to other people. The text says, in other parts of Macedonia. Yeah. Reaching over to Achaia, uh -huh. the neighboring, which was the neighboring province to the south. Mm -hmm. The Thessalonian church, brothers and sisters, was not just a building. All right. Uh -huh. All right. All right. All right. Let me try that again. I say it. The Thessalonian church was not just a building. Yes, sir. In, the, in the folk of choir. Let me try that one more time. Uh, an exemplary church is not just a building. Yeah. Dr. Moss, let me say this. I don't want to make anybody upset. I've been around long enough. Uh, I read out of the day. 35 years just playing music. Been in church a long time. And so many times I've seen churches move into building programs. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm talking from experience now as a musician and now as a pastor. Yes, sir. We move into a building program and we mess around and get to a point that we can't even be an example to the community. Right. See how quiet it is? Oh, we ain't got enough money for this. We ain't got enough money for that. We don't have enough money. Baby, how you gonna be an example to the world and you put no emphasis on material things? Listen, you ain't got the idea of building buildings. We gotta try to build people for Christ. Hey, we God ain't coming back for no building. He's coming back for people. I ain't just talking about where I am. I'm talking about what I've experienced down through the year. And let me help you with something. If you building a building gonna stop you from helping your community and giving back to your community, baby, you don't need to build. If $50 is going to hurt you, if $150 is going to hurt you, you don't need to build. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
said, no way they ain't going to talk about trying to build no building. They're trying to build people. You got seven folks sitting up there. You're trying to build a 500 seat section. Something ain't right with that picture. Amen. 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 This text says that they were not only an example in the Lakeland community. Yes. And I ain't too familiar with Parker people. Whatever the next neighboring town is around here. Yeah. Yeah. St. Emma, your yeah, reputation Ooh. and your character yeah. ought to precede you. Y'all yeah. yeah. say they're not only yeah. they're not only doing a good work there, yeah, in Lakeland. But every time you look around, I see them moving through the neighborhood. Matter of fact, they're moving through the neighborhood yeah, that, 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 where the church is not even located. Why? Because they're worried about doing some ministry and they want to be an exemplary church. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Energetic church. Yeah. An elect church. Yeah. An exemplary church. Yeah. It was an evangelistic church. Yeah. All right. It's hard to get us other people to evangelize. We get mad when our other brothers and sisters who believe erroneous doctrines yeah. go around knocking on it. But you know what thing? At least they got the right method. Yeah. 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 Big doctor on your door. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. They ride my name, they ride around on bicycle or they get up early on Saturday morning, knocking on your door, passing out there. Come on, talk to me. Well, at least they have. The right method. Yeah. Our folk come on Sunday, and that's all they want to do. Don't even want to come back from next through the week. And, and, and now we done got so modern, we have service one time. When I was growing up, and we, and look, and we put so much excuses on the COVID. COVID had really, Lord, revealed a lot of fake folk in his yeah, church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you going to evangelize? Child, we got we got COVID. Our baby, they've always had some diseases out here. But God did not say, hey, evangelize are only if you don't have a disease. I wish I had a house over here. And St. Alma, you ought to get tired. In some churches, you don't. You ought to get tired of coming here every Sunday morning looking at the same faces. You ought to get excited when God sends some new faces in the place. And guess what? When God sends some new faces in the place, don't you run them out. I've been holding this position for 40 years. That's what, and you need to give it up. Because it ain't going nowhere. Give it to somebody else and sit your old self down somewhere. The church is dead. The church is plateau. And you just sit. And you get mad when pastor leave and go somewhere else. Because hell, you won't. Because you won't do what you So Get out the way and let somebody else. I know that. No, we just can't keep a pastor. There may be a reason why you can't keep a pastor. They tell you to go out and evangelize. Bring somebody. And you look up. <laughs> same folk. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, and I can see if Henderson was telling you, go out there and I can see if Dr. Moss said, go out there and get I can see if Dr. Dupree said, go out there and get I can see if Reverend Hudson and other preachers say, go out there. I can see if we were just telling you. But Jesus said, go out and compel them to come. And you won't even do what Jesus If you don't do what Jesus said, do I know good and well you're going to do what we actually do. You got to get quiet. I know. See, I feel that. I feel that. Their faith in God has become known everywhere. I'm almost through, y'all. Mm -hmm. We have to look at their message of this evangelistic church. Their message was Jesus. Yeah. Verse 2 text says, the word of the Lord. In other words, the gospel was the heart of the message. But then, brothers and sisters, yeah. I see something else because I've been in places, Dr. Moore, where folks say this, catch this. Ooh-wee! Worship was so high. Y'all heard this before. Worship was so high, they didn't even need a word. I don't know what kind of Bible you read. The Bible says it's by the foolishness of preaching that we are saved, not the beauty of singing. Hello, somebody. Not how high you can pray, not how high you can, that's good, that's good, but it puts you, it, it put you in a mindset to be able to receive a word. But hear me today, no worship service, no song service should get that high 
why? But a woman of God, the man of God, cannot stand and preach the word of the Lord. Or oh, we can just go home. No, that's the devil. I can go to the club and shake Hey! That's music too. And if the right song come on, hey, you go ahead, come on. How many y'all like those? How many y'all like those? Probably not that. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not at home. You know, I mean. get it, get it. Yeah. you know, we like those Fantasia concerts, you know. Mm -hmm. We go to Fantasia and say, boy, Fantasia, take you to church. And she do, she do. But to me, it's, it's good, but it's, it's a split mindset. Yeah. Baby, don't tell me about making love in one instance and then trying to tell me about Jesus. Yeah. James says, a double-minded man is unstable and all, and I love me some Beyonce, but baby, if you're going to sing the blues, sing the blues. If you're going to sing church, let's have some church. I don't want to be a double-minded person. Yeah. 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 And if you listen to me, Fantasia, I love you, boo-boo, but don't, don't, I, don't take me to church if I'm at your concert. That's not, it, the Bible says there's a time for all things. And I'm there, I'm there to, hey, hear some song and get right with Sister Henderson. You understand what I'm saying? Because I ain't going to, go to your concert to sing Amazing Grace. I ain't going to your concert to say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No, my mind is somewhere else. And when I leave, I want to do something else. That's why they don't like the girl. Talking about being an evangelistic church. Now, Dr. Moss, you gotta have a balance. That's all I'm saying. We gotta have a balance. You can't be so holy, brothers and sisters, yeah. to where you don't enjoy certain things that God has for you here. As long as you don't put that before him, you have to know within yourself, I have a relationship with the master. Evangelistic, so they had the right, they had the right message, and that's never an inappropriate time to preach God's word, especially when you are in His consecrated place. So you'll tell somebody next time you hear that, oh, the song service got somebody. The Reb couldn't even preach. No, I have to call Reb and have, Reb was late and probably didn't have a word to preach. And I ain't never out of word. I'm always out of time. Like now, nah, let me get to that runway right quick. Message there, the method. What was the method? Right there in verse 8, the text says, it sounded out and then it spread it abroad. Y'all see that? Yeah. That's the method. Sound out. And when it sounded out, it ought to spread abroad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm through now. But uh that was an old man who was walking. The streets of town one day. And Dr. Moss, as he was walking, he saw an old mangy dog in the alley. And two strains of hair on top of his head, and one strain of hair on his back. He was over in a corner, just all shriveled up. It looked like a couple more days he would have been a dead dog. Yeah. Old man reached down, got this old dog, brought him back to the farm, nursed this old dog back to hell. Yeah. Every day he'll go out there and pour black oil on this old dog. Keep in mind, just back in the day, he couldn't afford to go to the vet. Yeah. Yeah. Put old black oil, old old oil, put old black oil on old dog. Every day when I didn't groom him, fed him real good, gave him water, changed him water. And brothers and sisters, as the weeks went on, yeah. days went on, weeks went on, the old dog began to feel pretty good. Hair yeah. began to grow back. Yeah. Yeah. After a while, brothers and sisters, a few more months passed, and all of a sudden, he was this beautiful Labrador retriever. Yeah. 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 Well, brothers and sisters, hmm. It being what it is, old man left the dog man to farm. By this time, Dr. Moss, he had to name the old dog, called him Rover. Mm -hmm. Rover, you stay right here, boy. I'm going to town. I'll be back. And as he went into town, brother, this sister was a circus in town. Yeah. yeah. And plastered on every light pole 
was a poster saying, bring your before and after pictures of a dog that you may have found and nursed him back to hell. Yes, Old man yes, pulled a poster off the wall, off the post, went on back to the farm, excited. Because he had some before pictures. <laughs> and he had some after pictures. So he got the old dog. And the old dog was well trained. He didn't even have to put a leash on the old dog. The old dog walked with him all back to town. And he went to the, went up to the booth and, and registered the dog. And showed him some before and some after pictures. And they put him out there. Brothers and sisters in the past. Where everybody was. All these dogs was on display. But while he was out there. Cameramen like this brother sitting over here and news media and all of them were just flashing there was old time cameras and, and I guess the flashes startled old yeah Rover <laughs> Rover took off ears set back boogity 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 that's old time that's old folks say boogity but in other words he was getting up the old man yelled out Rover come back here boy Rover just kept on going. Rover was gone. Well, brothers and sisters, that old man kept on looking for Rover. Every day, he kept on looking for Rover. Days turned into weeks. And then weeks turned into months. Yeah. Months, brothers and sisters, turned into years. Yes, sir. But then once one, one Saturday evening, this old man was sitting on his porch. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, he heard a loud noise coming down his long driveway. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. He said, I wonder what is that noise. The old man put down his newspaper. And then he looked up, brothers and sisters, and guess who it was? It was old man Rover. Yeah, yeah. Old man, yes, with a smile on his face. Yeah. When Rover got just a little bit closer, he said, well, that's my boy Rover. He said, Rover, hmm, where you been, boy? He said, it's good to see you. Rover jumped in his arms, and as any dog would do, we're trying to lick him in the face. Right. Owner said, no, Rover, don't lick me in my face. Can you tell me where it is that you've been? I look for you, and days hmm, turn into weeks. And then uh, weeks turn into months. Yeah. And then months turn into years. Mm, Rover, mm, I haven't seen you in a long time, but boy, mm, you still look good to me. Mm. Then after a while, brothers and sisters, the old man heard mm, another loud noise coming down his long driveway. Oh yeah. Mm. And the old man said, what is mm, this noise that I'm hearing? And after a while, brothers and sisters, this old man, he looked out. Mm, and then he saw about 30 to 45 dogs mm, running down yeah, his long driveway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm, then uh, when these dogs got a little bit closer, mm, uh, Rover looked at his master and said, Roof, roof. <laughs> Then he looked back at those dogs and said, Roof, roof. Looked back at his master wagging his tail and said, Roof, roof. By this time, the rest of the dogs had made a circle around this old man. And the old farmer said, I don't understand, Rover, what it is you're trying to tell me, boy. And let me tell you about these dogs, these 30 to 45 dogs, brothers and sisters. They were spewing, they was malnutrition, brothers and sisters. Yeah, they were mangy, and they was dirty. Today, when Rover looked at his master and said roof roof and looked at the other dogs and said roof roof and the only thing Rover was trying to say the same thing you did for me I know you are able to do it for him yeah straight down yeah we have been spiritually 
An expected church. Yeah. What you mean? Uh, an expected church. Uh, you ought to be a church uh, looking forward uh, to Jesus uh, coming back again. Uh, yes. Then the son, uh, how do you know uh, he's coming back again? Uh, but I'm glad you asked. Uh, I know a man from Galilee. Somebody. 
thank God for the preacher. The Lord knew who to send. And he's not afraid to preach like Paul preached. He said you may not leave him, like him when you leave him. Shucks. But when your belly was hurting back yonder. Mama used to give us castor. And it didn't taste good. But it sure enough cleaned you out. And so our preacher this evening has cleaned us out. And tried to clean us up. So that we'll be an example. See, it's time out for preaching that pretty stuff. Too many souls are leaving Samantha the same way they came. And so God, we thank you for our preaching. And we certainly want not to hold you in any longer. We've gotten spoiled here. People getting spoiled with that hour. You know? They want, yeah, they, they get nervous after an hour. But we thank God for our preacher. Do we have any, certainly as we prepare now to leave God's house, we want to recognize all of our visitors. We thank you for being with us. We see you. You have blessed our hearts by being with us. Thought it not robbery to come over to St. Albert. And we appreciate you. For all the preachers in the house, would you stand? All ministers in the house, would you stand? So we can recognize you. Thank you all. Reverend, I'm glad you, your preacher preached for you this moment. I think I got all of you. I thought he was, look, I thought at one time that he was hitting the Beyonce, but you came on back, came on back, came on back. That's my friend. We bless God for him. Uh, look, before we leave, we're, we're preparing to go. We're going to ask our preacher to come and give his final words and the benediction. But uh, if you want a brief history, because at the end of the day, we gathered to celebrate 158 years. And we have come to recognize here at St. Alma that those of us who are gathering every Sunday, we didn't lay the foundation. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, it was old man Horace Jones who saw fit to go and get whatever he needed in order to build this church. I'm taking my time because this church is built on Jesus. The one who died. And we are nothing more than the body. So 18, 1859, when was slavery abolished? 1865. See, y'all, a lot of y'all didn't know that because you didn't say nothing. 1865, slavery was abolished. Nine years later, 1874, this church was founded and erected by Pastor Horace Jones and a congregation of 65. You talk about what we have now and won't do. Can you imagine what they went through so that we could have? I, I'm, I'm not gonna be long, but I think sometimes we just take for granted that we, went, we are where we are by our own bootstraps. But somebody suffered. And I declare and decree on this evening, as long as I'm pastor of this church, as long as I'm the broom's handle, <laughs> that we're gonna stand on a solid foundation. Yeah. And not only will we stand on a solid foundation, but for even the babies of this house, we'll come to realize that the church didn't get here because we showed up. We're standing on the shoulders of those before us.
and for that we are grateful. For those of you who want a brief history, we have prepared a scroll with our history on it. Just a brief history. And our usher will have it at the back door. And we have some a full history. Because to tell the whole story, it couldn't fit on a scroll. So our entire history of this church is written in this book. And we would love for you to have a copy if you would love to have one. So now we've come to the end and we're preparing now to give. And here at St. Albert, we know your responsibility. We give one dollar per year. And whatever we gonna do, we gonna do it just like the scripture. We gonna do it quickly. Cause you know, if you were gonna give, you were ready when you got here. Amen, somebody. So the deacons are ready to receive us in the rear. For those who are sharing with us, at this time, you are, uh, we're inviting you to participate with us with your tithes and your offerings. St. Alma, we believe in tithing and offering. You already know it. We'll also do all giving at the rear of the church at this time. All given. If anyone needs an envelope, please just raise your hand and the usher will assist you. Thank you, Jesus. Raise your hand. We're going to get you an envelope. But I see some hands. I see some hands. Thank you, Jesus. There's a child with his hands up. Don't ever deny a baby. The last place that I was at this week when they gave an opportunity to give, they didn't have to ask me twice, Alex. I just reached down in my purse and I got my checkbook. And you know why? And I didn't give 10 cents. I didn't give $5. I gave as the Lord blessed me. And I gave because I was sowing in good seed. If you're stingy, God going to be stingy with you. Uh-oh. As a man sow it, so shall we be. This preacher got me telling the truth up here. We, we getting ready to go. Don't, don't worry. Don't, don't, don't get upset by God's money. Shall we stand? And as we prepare to leave God's house, Again, I'm messing up because I said I wanted the preacher to do the benediction, but he didn't he didn't know to do what I just did. So preacher, would you come now, please, sir, and give the closing benediction? And when he does that, you will leave the church, turn to the windows, and exit those doors with your giving. God bless you, all of our friends who thought it not robbery to come. My Dupree family love you. All of that, I see my sister Pearly, my brother Mac, and my, my sister-in-law, she's been around so long, Pat, she's sister. But all of you, my Lewin sisters, I see you, and we appreciate you. SRBI, Brother Rob, all of you guys. And of course, my, uh, my preachers, churches, both of you, thank you for coming to share with us. Thank you, choir, for all the music that you've done. Come on, Pastor. I gave my giving my cash. Amen. God bless you. Brothers and sisters, thank you for your daily prayers. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Annie York and Union Chapel for coming. Amen. May the God of Israel, the once risen Christ, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, would rest rule and abide with us now and forever. Let us all respond by saying, I am still building. I am still building. On my building. On my building. God bless you.